Hey guys, this is Mr. K. Um, so this week and next week, we're going to be talking about Unity. The um, it's one of our principles of design. Yeah. So this is a little presentation we made to tell you about it. Here we go. Let's get started. First up, what is Unity? Well, in art, unity is the elements and principles that are consistent with each other in shape, style, color, consistent with the overall message of the image. Um, unity is a measure of how the elements of a page seem to fit together. They tend to belong together. Um, a successful composition displays unity. Unified works of art represent first you know, a whole image and then some of its parts. Um, think of Unity like a basketball team. In basketball, there are individual players, but they are working together toward a common goal of scoring baskets and winning the game. A disorganized team is not going to do a very good job with this. Unity is the same way. Even though each element in principle is an individual like a basketball player, they work together toward a common goal of completeness for an image. Okay, um, where do we find Unity? Um, first up, we find it in fine arts. Most great art has Unity in one way or another, and we can find it in all of our forms, but fine arts is the big one we see it in, and the first one we're gonna look at. Um, next up is graphic art design. Unity is a big part of this type of work. Design without Unity does not get messages across. Let's look at, look at the example. The ads are all unified in design. They have the same kind of consistency, same messages for the most part. It's all very similar and unified. Last example we're going to look at real quick is architecture. Architecture uses Unity to give visual appeal. The Parthenon in Athens is a great example of this. It's unified in its design. Um, everything is, say, similar and Kind of on point. It's a very pretty building, even if it is kind of ruined now. All right, why is Unity important? Unity is important for two very big reasons. First, consistency. Establishing and maintaining consistency throughout a design piece is essential to keeping making it a success. Look at this example by Vincent van Gogh. His unity and elements and principles give his work a consistency that flows throughout the work. Same kind of style and line and consistent colors throughout the whole piece make it unified. Next is message. If there is no unity, then the main message of the design may be lost or miss the target audience. Look at this example here by Frida Kahlo. Without unity in the elements, this already complicated piece would be a total mess and her message would be lost. It's a very pretty piece. It's unified and it's layout and designs, and the symbols are easy to see because of it. Unity helps hold the images together, both image-wise and message-wise. Bottom line. Elements and principles we can use to show Unity. Here are some of the things we can do. First up, color, line, texture, shape and form. Space, simplicity, pattern, and style. All these things work in different ways to show unity, and every piece will not have every element. Some pieces will have unity in multiple ways. For example, look at this one. This is Fernando Botero's Musicians, painted in 1991. Botero creates unity in musicians with form, shape, color, line, and space. Give it all overall brings the piece together. All right, let's take a closer look at each way to show unity. First up, color. Color is a great and easy way to show unity in a piece. There are many ways to show unity in a piece with color. First up, complementary colors. Using complementary colors, like warm and cool colors, can help tie pieces together, make so things look like they belong. Um, a dominant color. Using a dominant color in the aspect of piece will unify a painting 
pulled together. And last, we have color symbolism. Colors that work together with the message. For example, an environmental action poster will do well with greens and other natural colors to support the message of the piece. Um, here is a great example of unity using color. This is Pablo Picasso's The Old Guitarist, painted in 1903-04. He uses all three of these techniques in his painting. He uses complementary colors between the man's skin, the guitar, and the ground. They're all complementary with each other. They're all nice and cooler colors. Um, he uses a dominant color in the blue, seen throughout the entire piece. Even the man's skin has a tint of the blue. Um, and he uses color symbolism as the blue reflects the guitarist's emotion in the piece. If this whole thing was red, it might not get the same feeling and emotions, you know, as it is now. Blue has a very somber, you know, tone. Hence, we used to say, I'm blue. This kind of reflects that piece. Next up is line. There are a few ways to show unity in a piece with line. First is distance. Very distances between lines create lighter and darker values and can help beautify a piece. Next is direction. Lines going in the same direction can create unity. Different directions can create variety, which is good, but it must be balanced to create a unified piece. Next is thickness. The similar thicknesses in line can create unity. Look at different artists' brushstrokes. They use the same little lines to create a cohesive piece. Here's a great example of unity with line. This is Marcel Ducamp's new Descending a Staircase, painted in 1912. There are um, very distance between the lines, which give it some value. Um, the lines emphasize movement in the same direction. All the lines are going down at the staircase. Um, and most of the lines have a sketchiness to them that unifies the world piece, giving them the same kind of thickness. All right, next is texture. There's one big way to show you a piece with texture, and that is similarity. Overall service treatment that is similar creates a strong sense of unity. If you're doing an abstract texture, the entire piece stays in that texture. If you're doing a piece that has implied realistic textures, the whole piece is that way. Let's look at some examples of unity with texture. First is Claude Monet's Rue Montaglier. Oh, I said that wrong, I apologize, in Paris, in 1878. You can easily see the similar texture throughout the piece. You've got these flags and the people in the bottom. They all have the same abstract texture and feel to it. It just, it flows. If we have realistic flags in this piece with the people in the bottom the same way, you know, the, with the, as they are now, the piece would not work. It would just look weird. All right, next we have Dante Gabriel Rossetti's Lady Lilith from 1868. Even though the piece has a more realistic feel and look to it, the texture is the same throughout. You can see, you know, texture of her, even like the back of her chair and her hands and her hair have the same similar feel. They're all realistic in nature, but the texture itself overall it has a fuzziness to it that's kind of nice. It makes a unified piece. Now we're gonna look at shapes and form. There are two ways to show unity in a piece with shape and form. First, similarity, similar to the last one. A lot like texture, using similar shapes and forms creates unity. Using mostly curved and soft forms in organic sense or hard and sharp shapes like you would in a geometric sense. Next is repetition. Repeating similar shapes also creates unity. Um, let's look at some examples. This is Wasley Kandinsky's piece, Circle and Circles, painted in 1923. Use repetition and similarity in the circles that create unity. They're all very, all the shapes are very geometric. You know, there's no organicness to them at all. Um, and he repeats the circle, circle patterns and the line patterns he has going on here to give it a unified look. Okay, look at another example. This is Gustave Calibrotz, a fruit displayed on a stand. Painted in 1881. It follows the same techniques of similarity and repetition as the last piece does. All the forms are circular in design, even though they're more organic shapes. 
they have a nice organic feel to them, um, but they're all very similar in form. They're circular. They're, um, and it's, you know, it's all kind of fits together. It flows. It works. So yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of options you can do with fruit, but he chose all circular ones. Okay, next up is space. Space uses different things to show you duty. First up, size. Um, elements are not overwhelming one another. You don't have one giant thing and a whole bunch of little small things. They're all very... You don't have one thing that's so big it everything else is lost. Um, proportion. Um, giving elements similar proportions ties it together. So if you're going to do you know, realistic proportions, you do it for everyone in the picture, not just one guy and make everybody else look weird. It will throw off your painting. Um, last is proximity. Proximity refers to the closeness of different components in a work of art. By placing parts close together, the mind is able to see parts as one thing. It's a kind of a mass. Um, let's look at a couple of examples. First, we have Casper David Frederick's The Life Stages, beach picture, circa 1834. It shows unity with size, as elements are not overwhelming one another. There's a nice boat, but it's not overwhelming the people in the picture. Um, the objects are proportionate, and they have a nice proximity to one another. So we have this nice group of people. They're kind of clustered. Even with the boats, they have a nice cluster. Um, they're proportionate. So we have, you know, the closer old man is not disproportionate to the boat in the background. They're all, you know, realistic proportions. He's not, his stick is not, you know, huge compared to the tub next to him. The, you know, stuff like that. It's very proportionate, very similar. Gives a nice flow of peace. This next picture follows the same rules. Things are proportionate. There's no one element that overwhelms the others, and the birds were clustered together to make a nice mass and gives it a nice feeling, nice appeal. The overall picture. Next, we have simplicity. Simplicity refers to purposely reducing the amount of potential variety. For example, a graphite pencil drawing is likely to exhibit some measure of unity, given the lack of color. By eliminating color, the image is simpler than it potentially could have been if it was color was introduced. Okay, look at this example. It's a very simple pencil sketch. Much of the visual information has been intentionally left out. It's devoid of color, but still shows a variety with the direction of the lines and the use of shading. Um, say so we also have the way the shape the shapes are simple. He uses just straight lines. He could have done a curved head and curved nose and ears, but they're more straight and rigid. So he takes away the variety in that aspect as well. Um, the result of this missing variety creates a simple but unified piece. Next up is pattern. The biggest way pattern can show unity is through repetition. Repetition of color, shape, texture, or object can be used to tie work together and will help guarantee a feeling of unity. Let's get a few examples. This first one is a tessellation. A tessellation is an arrangement of shapes that fit together in a repeated pattern without gaps. This tessellation shows um, of the birds depends on both repetition and proximity, resulting in a highly unified image. Due to the complete lack of negative space, the repeated bird shapes feel like one pattern. Okay, so he's using repetition of the bird shape, even though you know they're different colors and whatnot. It gives it a nice unified feeling of pattern. This next one is called Golconda, 1953, by Rene Mar Marguerite. Golconda depicts a scene of nearly identical men dressed in dark overcoats and bowler hats, seem to be drops of heavy rain falling from the sky. Um. So the men create a repeating pattern that unifies the piece. They're similarly spaced apart. They are all very similar looking, even though they're not identical. It gives it a odd unifying feeling with the rest of the piece. It kind of ties all together in an abstract, surrealist kind of way. Last one we're gonna look at is style. Overall style can create a unified message. 
Many artists have their own style that they try to carry over through all their works. Um, style creates unity in two big ways. First off, correspondence. We use corresponding colors, shapes, values, textures, lines, and symbols to create a visual representation and relationship between elements. For example, a wedding invitation has certain style elements that give it an instant recognition and create correspondence in the viewer's mind, like wedding bells, doves, flowers, bride and groom images, a flowing flowery scripts, those kind of things. They kind of correspond together. You know, if you have a wedding invitation that has, you know, flames and death metal type things on it, it's going to kind of throw you off and it doesn't unify the overall message and image of what you're trying to do. Um, next, we have continuation. This is a much more subtle method of unifying a work that involves a continuation of line, edge, or, or direction from one area to another. Continuation is often used in books and magazines to tie elements of pages together with the use of rules and by lining up edges of copy, headlines, and graphics. Um, for example, you got National Geographic and you're reading an article about you know, Paulo Picasso. The style of page one is going to be the same style as page two. There might be different elements on the pages, but the style is still the same. Okay, let's look at this at how it works in fine art. First step, we have Paul Cezanne's Mount St. Victoire, 1904 to 06. I actually quite like this piece. It's one of my favorites. Um, it has an overall style that is consistent throughout this piece and most of his other works. Um, Say so he has a continuation of his lines, also gives a unity to the piece. As we follow from one side of your work to the other, we kind of go from left to right as we kind of follow the mountain and follow it down across the piece. The lines kind of have a continuation, even if they're not direct lines and more, you know, strokes. It has that feeling of continuation throughout the piece. Um, next example is American Gothic by Grant Wood. Um, he has his elements that correspond with another. You know, it's a farmhouse, farm scene, so he has a farmhouse, you know, pitchfork. He kind of has, they all correspond. Um, colors match. That thing, you know, she doesn't have bright pink hair. It all kind of, it fits. Um, that thing seems kind of out of place. He also has continuation in the direction of his piece as we follow from the top to the bottom. Everything has a length to it. Look at the lines on the house and the roof and like his shirt. They're all kind of going from top to bottom. Um, he also continues his symbols throughout the piece. The pitchfork design. This pitchfork he has in his hands, we see multiple times. Look at his overalls. He kind of, where the seams of his jeans are, they're kind of, an overall, uh, pitchfork design. You can kind of see it in the window behind the very top. Um, there's a little shadow of it on the roof to the right. It kind of just, it corresponds with one another and it flows throughout the piece. Guys, thanks for watching this video. Remember, the bottom line is that unity is everything in the picture flowing together. There's a cohesion and it looks like a whole. It's important to keep things similar. Repeat colors, pictures, lines, etc. This will set you up for success with a good composition. Okay, now it's time to use what you've learned here and put it into practice with your unity project we're gonna be doing over the next two weeks. All right. Okay, guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, me and Ms. Anderson miss you. Hope you guys are having a, at least a little bit of fun while in quarantine. And we will see you guys next time.